We need Squatch video. <laughs> Yes. In Bigfoot screen. It went, oh, oh. That was a freaking yep. classic. Yeah, mark that. Sorry. We literally all just heard that. Individually, did not speak about it until it was done. Gert stopped, I stopped, Seth stopped. Did you hear it, Cole? Yeah, I heard it. Cole heard it too. And we all heard the exact same thing. <laughs> that was amazing. This is Alice Cooper, and this is The Haunting of KGGO.com, a KGGO.com exclusive. Hello, friends, and welcome to the first ever edition of The Haunting of KGGO.com. My name is B Sox. I'll be your host during this little adventure. Friends, joining me in studio here at KGGO, uh, I want to welcome from Calhoun County Paranormal Investigators, Seth Olney and his no good brother, Jesse. That's right. <laughs> hey, Don't guys. you forget it. What's CCPI doing now? We are... Uh... Bigfoot hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's like the best yes. way you can say it. Yeah. Seriously, you're Bigfoot hunters. The, uh, the official yeah. word would be cryptozoologists. We go after, you know, creatures that are in not Iowa. In Iowa, yeah. See, that's I think that's the part that uh, kind of blows my mind with this when you because you guys are actually really serious. This isn't a joke. You guys yeah. really do oh, for sure. in, yep. investigate Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. um, Iowa just isn't know. You know, it doesn't have that. That history of those stories of you know eight foot tall walking you know ape man. Okay, how, why, and where did you decide? You know what, squatching. I, I, the first thing I have to say is is like when you hear about ghosts in Iowa, they're like, oh yeah, cool. And Bigfoot is like, what? No way, that doesn't make sense. Exactly. No, that it's true. But as you can see by, you know, obviously we're just joking around, but your reaction is like laughing and are you high? That is a majority of people who've experienced Bigfoot and they don't want to talk about it because it's so insane what they've seen. But it's gone on for decades decades this Iowa has had history of Bigfoot especially like Humboldt area mm -hmm. there was at one point in the 70s half the town had seen a Bigfoot I mean really what at what point did you go yeah Bigfoot let's solve this thing so I never really believed in Bigfoot for most of my life until I really started to get into more of the paranormal we lived in the Cedar Valley at the time and it was then that we started to kind of hear rumbles of Bigfoot lore from that area. I remember telling Seth when he would come to me with different, you know, ideas and stories of Bigfoot in that area, and I would just be like, you know, that's a cool thought, but I don't really believe. I'd have to see it to believe it. Then it was just this one night that we got lost in the woods, and I had my first encounter with what I believe to be a Sasquatch. 
everything that we are finding that happens with Bigfoot activity was happening to us. Every time we go out and look, something would happen. We are experiencing all of this activity, all your classic Bigfoot stuff. And we're in Iowa. We're not in the Pacific Northwest. Like, we're not in Canada. I remember talking to Bigfoot hunters back in the day. I asked them, what's a good experience? And they're like, oh, you get lucky if you hear a call. You get lucky if you hear a tree knock. You get lu real lucky if you have uh, rocks thrown at you. We're having all this stuff happen in the middle of Iowa. And the more research we've done, it's, it's people all over the state have experienced this. And it's incredible. Over the next year, CCPI would interview witnesses, investigate the locations of previous encounters, and return to the locations of CCPI's most prolific run-ins with the elusive creature. And we came probably to about here, and we started hearing on both sides of the trail, like these screams, these weird sounding screams that sounded like I don't know, like animal, but human at the same time, and they just kept going and going, and it was really loud. I mean, loud. Hi, I am Jacqueline Conkle. Hi, I'm Will Conkle. Here, probably it's been like two years ago now or so. I went out to a trail that I go to all the time, and I've been out there many, many times, and it was me and my stepdaughter. Well, we go out to this trail, and we always go like late at night, and by this time it was probably like, I don't know, like 10 o'clock at night or something. We go out there, and we go, we we'll probably walk it like a mile or so. And we hit this bench. Well, we sit down at the bench, we're hanging out at the bench. And next thing you know, we're hearing like these like crazy loud, like animalistic, but human kind of sounding screams. And I've never heard anything like it in my life. We sat there for a while and we're looking back and forth at each other. Like, what is this? What's going on? And it just kept happening and happening and I'm like, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. When we heard the screams, it was definitely from multiple sources. Like it wasn't just one thing screaming. Like it sounded like uh, female and male to me, like both screaming on both sides of the I'm Like there's no way there's people out here. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's late at night. There's nobody, there's no houses around, nothing. Well, we left. <laughs> I was like, no, nope, uh, we're, I'm good. I don't know what this is. We left. Kind of forgot about it. And I went out there multiple times after that. It didn't happen again. I was talking to my sisters one day, and I'm, this is probably like, I don't know, like six months later or something. I'm talking to my sisters, and he's playing random YouTube videos. And I'm watching this documentary about uh, Bigfoot, and it had audio of uh, these screams that they do. And I'm watching it intently, and she's just chat, chat, chatting with the sisters, and then all of a sudden she stops this. And um, what is that? What the heck did I just hear? Freaking rewind that right yes. now. Yes, I'm like, rewind this absolutely right now. What is that? My sisters are like, what's going on? You know, we're video chatting. So he stops and he plays it again and tells me what it is. And at that point, I kind of lost my mind because it right away took me back to being in the woods and us hearing that because it was like the exact same type of screams. It validated it. Yes, it validated what I was hearing. And not only that, I didn't even realize I was hearing like Bigfoot or something. I didn't realize that's what it was at the time. So right when I heard it and it hit me, I was like, oh my gosh, we're out in the middle of the woods with like a Bigfoot or multiple, you know, Sasquatch, whatever. Scary, crazy, and wild. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. So one night uh, after, after her experience, I decided to go out and go for the walk. And uh, drag him out. She had to drag me out. And we started doing our long walk. It's way back into the trail. The wilderness, if you will, was silent. You didn't hear any cicada, you didn't hear crickets, frogs, nothing. The, uh, you, you can hear the birds and the insects right now. All the wildlife went completely silent. I've been out there a lot, a lot of times. It's one of my favorite mm -hmm. places. But there's always deer. Like, there's always deer. There's yeah. always wildlife. I mean, owls, deer, yeah. everything. And I mean, they walk right across the trail and stuff, the deer will. Nothing, there was nothing that night. We were walking and like you said, it was just completely quiet. And we got this terrible smell. I mean, it smelled like, I don't know, garbage or something. Like it just smelled so bad. And we hit this wall of stench and I can only liken it to the dumpster outside a Mexican restaurant in July. 
terrible. We hit this wall, we both mentioned it, and we kept walking and we walked out of it. And we walked further in, and uh, we get to the our stopping point, which is a picnic table out in the middle of nowhere. And we sit down and we start hearing this rustling and grunting across the path from us in the woods. Like something moving around, hearing, hearing, the, hearing the, the limbs moving, the leaves rustling. Wasn't, wasn't any kind of wildlife I could recall. It was pitch dark, I couldn't tell what it, what it might be. I know there's cows over in that area, but they can't get to where, where we were, I find out later. And it just kind of stopped. The woods here has a really, really dense covering as well. I mean, you can't see the, the stump of the tree. It's really hard to walk into. So we didn't actually pursue it. I walked up to the edge of it with my flashlight, the, the wooded area, I uh, couldn't see anything. And of course the, the rustling and everything stopped at that point. Uh, we headed back and we came back down the trail and where we ran into that wall of stench, it was gone. It's Nothing. Completely gone. Yes. The wildlife, the, 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 the bugs and the cicadas and everything, we could hear them then. They came back. Mm -hmm. The frogs. After the Conkles approached CCPI with their claims, the team, along with Will and Jacqueline, hiked to the undisclosed location where these experiences took place to see if they can document further proof of this alleged Sasquatch activity. It's literally this dark out here. This flashlight's on, you literally can't see anything. Nothing at all. <laughs> I don't know what do. What do we do with our hands? Just stand here and look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it's so humid and warm out here that Seth is literally steaming. Look at that. That's legit steam rolling off of my brother. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's like your ghost writer. <laughs> that is insane. Dude, I've never seen anything like that before. Wow, you're right. I just see it. <laughs> you're right. Oh my gosh. It's like... <clears throat> By it, but we didn't. We had no lights on. No. I, hey, I heard something. I did too. Back here. Yeah. It was a rock. No change in the water. A rock or a tree knock? One of the two. Yeah, I heard it. Yep. Gonna knock. Will's pointing at something. Yeah, that broken brain. Oh, you're right. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. That's weird. Yeah. Very that interesting. That too, isn't it? Or is that grown like that? See where the perfect little triangle is? So that's stuck down there. Yeah. Hey, we got, looks like there's like stuff stacked here. My shadow, it's broken there. Look at this, it's kind of. Is that broken like that or is that broke? Is it this one right here? Yeah, I think it's broke. Oh yeah, because there's, it's bent over. Yep. It comes down. 
see the bark tail on it? Oh yeah. Yep. It was done when it was wet. Mm. You're right. So <coughs> it was still alive. If it was dry and dead, it just, just snapped off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a good shot of it right there. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. There's a long... Something's broken there. What was that? It was a car. No, I heard no, talking I heard, over there. Yeah. I heard light that. down there. The light? It went... Ah. Yeah. The mail boy. Yep. To the point where I was like, there has to be someone coming down this trail. I, had, I, saw, I thought it was just one of those. Uh-uh. Interesting how we're looking at this and we hear it behind us. Mm -hmm. Maybe get us away from here. Mm -hmm. There's actually a piece broken right here resting on a leaf. So something has come through here to break that off and make it fall. Because it's not just a clean break either. We just heard a massive tree knocks. back up and start investigating that again I agree. when we started going towards it we heard the noises behind us yep. we stopped we headed back up there we heard the tree knocks let's get back over there it's trying to get us away from there all right let's light that up and have uh, have Kaylee get back up oh, in there I was looking at this like these sticks here in the back are all like yeah right exactly they are. It, it almost seems like a nest yeah Maybe a warning to check out. Yeah. Yeah, so or anything like that area up there like all There's that stuff is literally of... just placed there yeah it's like random I mean this thing is like hanging here yeah but like there's nothing broken that it could have came off of look at here this stuff has been laid there oh. yeah like this thing isn't attached to no. anything no dude this is good here man there's sticks literally placed here. Literally placed here. There's no way they could have fallen to where they've, they're at right now. Huh? Yeah, there's no way. So this is natural yeah, so that's good. and this is natural. But this here, this yeah, here. This big one here. Like yep. Where did this come from? That's been unless, placed there. Unless it fell. Is something broken up here at all? No. And this one here, this is the biggest one. Because Looks this like Yeah, it was broken, is broken there. And it's literally been placed there. And it's like weaved between this exactly. and this. Exactly. It's literally been placed right there. And these here. These are huge and they're literally like placed here. Ooh, hey, I smell that same smell from the, the creek. Wait. What the frick was that first? Yeah, that was not a
Keep an eye. Keep a light over here. You heard the one before that happened, didn't you? Where it was almost like this, like, it sounded like a child or something like that. I thought it sounded like a guy. Yes, there was, you were exactly. saying Exactly. Yeah. And then the coyotes all started going crazy. And, and, still and what happened right before that? I smelled it. Yeah, you right said up you there. smelled it. I didn't smell it. Yeah. Yeah. I was smelling it by the sticks. It smells <laughs> like... That's what I no, as soon as you said, I got away for something. Yep. The, the, the smell changed. Yeah. Because it hit me and my sensories went off. So I know I wasn't smelling something that was already there. And the fact that the second we smelt it, instant freak out down there, which then in turn caused the coyotes. Yes. The initial scream yeah. caused the coyotes. The coyotes are going crazy. Exactly, because of that initial scream. That was a blood curdling scream. Dude, I know. It's because the coyotes took up a wee fire. I'm going to hear scream so far away if we're messing with this. To get us away from that. To get us away. Dude, yes. every time we get close to that, something happens shortly after we get there. Alan, I'm not going to lie, there's probably one within 20, 30 feet of us right now. Yeah. Most likely there's a watcher somewhere very close yeah. to us. So, so we found this area here. It's kind of like pushed open. Everything was kind of like laid down right here. It's like a hole where maybe someone stepped in. We're trying to figure out maybe a deer would do this, maybe we don't. I have no idea, to be honest with you. Wow, that's deep. Way deeper than I thought. See, that, that, that one that clicks over this way, and then you have the two that will click over that way. This is super deep. Alan, come look. Look at this. We got a downward in depth induction, whatever the frick it's called. Yeah. There, there, and then you kind of more up there again. Oh, he's like breaking through. So yeah, this has been laid down. Right here was an indention in the ground that created like a hole. Then we have an indention here, an indention there. And then a big indention up in there that I could have jumped into, but you have a literally you have a clear path that leads up and over to that fence. Oh, you're right. It's almost like maybe it laid there. Here? Yeah. You can even see here. Someone's been walking through here. Look at the look at the barbed wire. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. The barbed wire has been bunched together. But what's it look like in other places? Barbed wire is not bunched over here. Yeah, it's only bunched right here. It's not over here. Yeah, it's bunched up barbed wire, barbed wire here. Looks like something walked over here too. With with the height of this this grass, this is a perfect nest. Perfect nesting area. Yep, no bunched up fence here. Perfectly clear. Yeah, light that sucker up. There was one other time I saw something like this, dude, out at Sailorville, and it was the night we saw a Bigfoot out at Sailorville. And it was in the exact area that it had rained to. Yeah, this is a clear path. Something has established here.
The first stop on CCPI's journey would prove to be very active. With activity including tree knocks, screams, and stick structures, Will and Jacqueline's previous experiences found validation. These findings served as a kickstart that would drive the team to continue their search. My second encounter with Bigfoot happened at Sailorville Lake, just outside of Ankeny. We were walking on a bike trail, actually not doing any kind of investigation or hunt or anything. And I saw this large, gray colored, hairy beast of some kind go down on all fours and run clear across the trail. And where it was actually standing when we came around the corner was a tree limb that had been gnawed on and it was dripping saliva. From then, we started to investigate around that area and we heard rustling deep within the trees in that same area. We followed along a fence line. We actually saw a really large creature stand up on its hind legs and look at us from a distance. From where we were standing, we judged that it was standing at about nine feet, maybe 10 feet high. And uh, when it noticed that we could see where it was at, it ducked back down and basically army crawled off into the woods. I just tell the camera what we just experienced. Okay, basically, we're walking down this path, just minding our own business. We've heard some kind of footsteps and knocks and things like that, but nothing really big. And we get just around that bend, and it sounded like a freaking shotgun or a huge stick, like bang! And then two big noises went to the left and to the right. One big one was white and it crossed this way and went to the woods over here to our left. The other one went into the woods over here to our right and I have a few moments over here. Sailorville Lake is a sprawling reservoir sitting north of the Des Moines area. Surrounded by dense woods, the lake has proven to be a hot spot for Sasquatch activity. From possible footprints and large stick structures, to several personal experiences dating back to the 1960s, where a man claimed to have had his arm ripped from its socket by a large beast. Turn the light on. Turn night vision on, dude. Oh, yeah. Dude, that thing was huge and white. I don't know if anyone else saw that. Really? Huge and I white. I didn't see it. Was it tall? It went across the... Uh, it, I was looking up. Pretty sure it was on all fours. I heard it. It was big and white. Like, heard, white as snow white. I heard it on each side. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I heard something huge. Right it was monstrous. Yeah, dude, I wow. saw it. It was huge and it was white. What is white? Old Bigfoot. And dude, I kid you not. You made it from that side to that side into the trees in two steps. Went two, two, and it was in. Yeah. No, I know they split. And that one went from this side to that side. Two steps. Snapped right there. I got it. You can see the white spot. 
Is really wet, isn't it? And it's like slobber. Yeah. Like just dripping down. I'm gonna try and get to it. This is the dry stuff here. Yeah, it is. Turn my flashlight on too. It happens a lot, but it does. It's like shiny. Yeah. It's like slobber. Yeah. We are finding eyes across this little pasture. They're blue. And they're moving too. Yeah. They'll stare at us, slowly look away, and then move. This has got to be whatever we heard. Yes, they did. Oh my gosh, here it is. The eyes are getting higher. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. That's all right. Oh my gosh. 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 Oh, oh, they moved, they moved. Just disappeared. Just disappeared. Yeah. That was really tall. Yeah. bent under it. Yeah, I know it is. So you can climb over it easily. Precisely. The barbed wire's been right bent. Right there. The barbed wire's bent under. I just want to get that quick. Oh, this fence is good. After the events of 2012, the team would make their way back to the area to see if they could further unravel the mystery of what they had encountered years before. because this goes even lower. Well, that puts a kibosh on that. We may be able to go through the campground. 
and find a way through the woods, that could be our only option. But it is an option nonetheless. True. Ooh, there's some another disturbance yeah. right there, Seth. Yep, yep. Wow. There's a disturbance there. Wow. Show the other one. Wait. Oh, right there? Yeah, right there. So they're there. We're now we're not saying it. these are prints. We're just saying that there's a strange disturbance in the Yeah. In the right. It's just weird because it's got that, that elongated shape. So, for example, we have this disturbance here. That was not from Seth. This one right there is from Seth. That's from me. So you can see that putting pressure in here is creating some sort of an indention within. But like, okay, let's see. These are size 12, I think. And I take a step and I walk. Yeah, you don't leave. You don't leave me unless you just imprint. Clearly, the indention is bigger. Much more, bigger. more wider than anything. Oh yeah, much wider. Well, and it's got another two inches on my foot. Yep. Plus, it's in there more. Yep. I'm a big boy, and I'm not leaving near the compression. Okay. So you can kind of see it there. So we got. Where's my finger? So heel is going to be right in this region here. Then we got the side of the foot going up. The toes would plane here, and then the side would come back around here. Okay, there we go, yeah. Definitely looks like a left foot. So what size shoe do you wear, Alan? Um, these are probably 10s. These are wides, too. Yeah, yeah, 10 wide. You can see the drastic difference there, specifically in the width of the foot and the width of the disturbance here on the ground. Again, so we're looking at the heel here. Wrap up to come up at the top here, come over, and then the side's gonna come down. It does Again, we're not saying it's a print, but it's definitely a strange disturbance with another small one over here. Yeah, I just heard something over there too. Yeah, I heard think about when we were up on that ridge and we saw and experienced that predator looking thing yeah wind wind yeah you're right climbing up the side of that rock i heard wind yeah. jumping off wind it's so almost true. every time you're having wind yep it's very odd and we like, should uh in the realm of what the f why yeah. and like we should we should research that a little bit see if there's yeah. any other people that have, have picked up on that absolutely Due to the flooding, the team was unable to access the areas from their original encounter. They would return one month later to further investigate. Significant experience with a Bigfoot. It is accompanied by owl sounds. Um, there's a lot of different beliefs that 
owls almost serve as watchers for Bigfoot to notify them that there are people. Okay. So where, and sorry, this is the interview part of me. No, that's good, bro. Okay. Who, where does that come from? The thought that an owl is a watcher for this? Um, like that, seriously, it sounds like some old guy in the bar. Uh, owls, Bigfoot, that's their watcher. Well, was it was it Gert telling us about how they watch out for other animals too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they like alert deer or something yep. like that. Yeah, huh. a good um, hunting friend of ours that we used to work with, he says every time um, he's hunting and a deer is near, oh yeah, um, owls will start to make calls. Really? Yeah. True. Wasn't it right, like, in this area, Jess? Yeah. Dude, it's right there, just toying with us. It's like right here where it was crouched down. before that it sounded like a dad noise okay that's right a great description totally. <laughs> like a, oh. <laughs> yeah when i said i heard like, like a grunt that's yeah. what i heard okay it is getting hazier in here mm-hmm. like, yeah. I'm seeing... oh here we go This happened right before Seth saw the big for the last time.
sounded far away. Yep, it was distant. Yeah. Do it again. Woo -woo! Woo -woo! Did you hear the whoop? Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. singular whoop? Oh! Dude, skunk again. Big time. It kept getting the vibe <laughs> that we were, there was something watching me. Yeah, I felt that too, dude. Day. Yep, I felt it from behind us. No, Did you just hear that? What? I saw a freaking tree knot. One. Really? Skunk again. I smell a skunk. Big time skunk. Come over here, Alan. I heard that. There's your skunk. Exactly. Exactly. It's good for you. I'm so glad you get to experience where they start going crazy. Crazy. And stuff starts picking up. Yep. And then they stop when things happen too. Socks has been kind of separating and then coming back. Yep. I thought he had gone over there and was coming up the hill. Okay. Like it was that clear. Hey, check this out. What? This right here. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Good catch. Oh, well, that's. Structure right here. That's interesting. That's completely on purpose. Like. 
Not an accident. And look, it's almost like they broke it off of these. Oh yeah. I don't see anything here. It's funny how that appears right on a trail. Yep. It's almost like a marker. Ow. You saw one? No, I heard him. Heard it? It's over here somewhere. Woo! There's something over straight out from me. Oh, yep, 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 yep. See it? I just saw it. Caught a glimpse. Woo. I don't know where it went, but I saw it. The nights spent at Sailorville Lake deepened the mystery that is Sasquatch. Strange noises, smells, and feelings paired with previous encounters and findings of the past year make the area one of the hot spots of the state. You never know what you might encounter while spending time at the lake. I would say the most insane thing I've ever experienced with Bigfoot is up in Northeast Iowa in Yellow River State Forest. And we're on this cliff. We hear something get chucked behind us. It was a rock or something. So we go back to investigate and we all kind of split up. I'm back there looking for this rock and Jesse watches this figure like peeking in and out behind a tree looking at us. And right after he says something, I look in the prairie grass and I literally watched this huge figure running through the grass. I can see through it. It's huge. It's a big figure. I instantly go, I'm seeing a ghost right now. But what's weird is right after it disappears, we hear rocks rolling down the side of the cliff. And it was literally in the direction that this thing was running. So it was like, Jesse watched this thing back and forth behind the tree. Then run, I watched it run through the grass, then jump off the side of the cliff. A lot of theories, a lot of uh, experiences have dealt with cloaked Bigfoots. And to this day, I'm not saying it was, but it really seemed that way. It, it worked with the, the rock being thrown because he was trying to get us to get out of there. Then Jesse seeing this big figure behind a tree. Then me seeing a big transparent figure running through grass, and then we hear a bunch of rocks flying, falling off the cliff. Very odd, very scary moment that we experienced. Rock was just thrown at us. That was very whatever it was. Yes, it was. Not a little acorn. No. I'm going to find it. And I was up there for Yellow River State Forest is tucked away in the far northeast corner of Iowa. The sprawling forests and rolling bluffs make most question if they're still in the state known for cornfields and farmland. This area has produced many reports of sightings and encounters throughout the years, including CCPI's first visit in 2017. our first squatch call of the day. I saw 
five or something. Like that. So sorry. That's a Isaac right over there. Curtis Sam figured. Did you hear that? Yep. Yes, I did. What was that? It was like a scream of some sort. Scream. Yeah. Where'd you hear it from, Seth? Yep. Yep. He's messed up the second I see him. The wind started by the fall. Crazy. I just found you split second because Jesse was panning with the camera, but it just looked like that black mound standing in the grass. Like way down the there. Opposite side of the river bank. Dang. It's right there. Rock was just thrown at us. I'm gonna find it. Uh, there. Hey guys, what do you think? Do you guys want to go up? Yeah, or what do you want to do? Dude, I swear to you, I just saw eyes over there. Wait, 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 wait. Put the light back. I swear I just seen something moving over there. What? Wait, I'm going. Not a breath over there. Dude, no. It was like moving across. I don't even know what it was, though. I'm not saying it was Bigfoot, but... I'm just going down here, because it's over there, because this, this trail cuts up that way. I am. I just heard, I just heard rocks over here, like Blair Witch style. Dude, that was effing weird. I don't know what to, how to explain it. Are you gonna it. go over there? Yeah. Wow, that was weird. Dude, that's exactly where I thought I was seeing stuff. Dude, I swore. I can't even tell you, it, it's not Bigfoot, I'm talking more like a ghost. Like, it was... What did you say? Okay, so I was focused, we were focused over here. Yeah. And I just see something like floating. What? Yeah. Like a mist? No, it was almost... Okay, like, look at this stock of trees right here, right? Okay. Now take that and just have it free floating. All the trees were moving? Like something that's shaped like that. That's all I seen. Like I couldn't, cause it was like my light was trying to catch up with it and I was only catching its like back end. And it was like, that's all I was seeing was something like that shape, but it was just like moving. Was it one of our lights panning? Cause we were all shining. I don't think so. So like, I was moving my light at the same time this way as everyone else was moving yours this way? No, it was like solid. There was something there. Like, it wasn't a reflection. I know what you're like thinking. I get, yeah. I don't know, that was weird. And then I heard freaking rocks. Like, over here, like big rocks like clamping together. You are like they got like thrown down a cliff. Or something. Did you hear that? It's like footsteps in there. Like leaves crunching or something. Yeah. Dude, don't do that. That was so loud. Guys, shh. Come here. Come here. Something is out there. Where? Where? Tell me just where. out in this area. I just heard like a very loud, loud movement. Dude, the thing is right, in, right before you freak out. Okay, we were looking through a hole in the tree. Yeah. Like the leaves. We were like, what is there? Like, it looks like something inanimate. Or uh, I'm sorry, something that's animated. And we're like, no. Okay, I think it's just leaves. We looked away. I slide the light by it again and I saw the, the glimmer of eyes. So I shot it back, and then that's when you freaked out. Dude. Dead serious. Dude. I don't know what's going on, but I... This is what happens, man. Who's away?
That was weird. Everything just started happening at once. Okay. Well, you know, like, the woods kind of come alive at night, so, like, as soon as the moon came up, it was like everything started happening. Did you hear that? I heard that. Did you guys hear that? Should we be nervous about coyotes like attacking us? <laughs> there was one over it. Should we be nervous about coyotes? Should we be nervous about coyotes? Should we be nervous about coyotes? After the experiences the team had in 2017, Seth, Jesse, and Dan decided to spend the weekend in Yellow River State Forest and attempt to further document what they had encountered the year before. The three of them would camp in the same campground where a woman had spotted a pack of eight Sasquatch crossing a stream just a few years before. Yeah. Still going. So, it got a little crazy last night. Uh, actually, this morning. Wind. Blusts or gusts very high. So, I just took down the side of the tent. I secured it a little bit better. I tied it off to the van. Bigfoot research documentary right now, and we're in the middle of all this crazy wind. It's a little breezy out there, so Gert's dead. <laughs> Didn't survive the night. R.I.P. <laughs> we may have to eat him. Um, Jesse just blends right into the gray. <laughs> He's gone. Absolutely gone.
we were here last year and we were doing some calls and we got probably the second best response we have ever gotten to a Bigfoot call. Second only to the direct response we got in Waterloo. But it was just, it was insane because when I did the call, literally the entire area lit up with different sounds, coyotes included, which is very common, mm -hmm. but then overtopped was just this elongated howling that was not a coyote. There's a clear difference between a coyote howl and a yelling, screaming, yeah. whooping. I'd call it a scream. Yeah. It sounded more like a scream than anything. But yeah. A low voice. Yeah. And so the classic that's... sound of a Bigfoot is, I mean, the best way to describe it. Yeah, absolutely. Do another call back this way. Another weird thing that happened when we were up here last time is random changes and shifts in the weather mm. happened after we were making calls and having activity. Yeah. We went from really calm to like super, super windy. And uh, what made me think about that is right after the call, the wind picked up pretty heavily. And that just connects it with the theory that Bigfoot is a very heavily spiritual being whether it's biblically spiritual, um, Native American spiritual, like it has heavy spiritual ties through a lot of different legacies of Bigfoot. And so one could make a connection that Bigfoot and, the, and Mother Nature per se have like that connection, they kind of work together. I heard something back in here. Okay, just see an eye shine down here. Big, we just got a big amount of movement right down here. Did you hear that? What's up? I heard a distant, uh, like a very high pitched. Really? It could have been a coyote, but note that. That's weird too, because we have not heard coyotes no. tonight. No, we haven't heard any coyotes tonight. And what I just heard way off in the dist, and I just heard it again. And I just heard something out yeah, there. I heard that. And I just heard a tree knock. Oh my gosh. Big. That is not a dog. No. Huge. 
two. Dude, we're getting close right now. The beginning was, the, it, it ended, like at first I thought it was um, a camper, like, yeah, because, yeah. but then the way it ended, it went out, like, it's hard, it's so hard to explain, but it doesn't, didn't sound human at the end, mm -hmm. that first though, like mm -hmm. when I thought it was, human, I, I thought, thought it was a human, mm -hmm. and then the way it ended, I was like, that's not a human. I thought it was yeah. someone messing with us. Alan says it was first. audible. Oh so, Alan, gosh. you heard that? Let us know, Alan. Did you hear that? Did anybody else hear that? Let us know in the comments so we know. Okay. So, TJ says it was. It was audible. Nice. So, they were able to hear it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, now we have it on Facebook. Yeah. We have it saved on Facebook, too. It breaks with, what's weird about Bigfoot howls, like a true good one, is like it's hard for us to even like imitate it yeah. yeah it's this guttural almost like it breaks up like it's like at the end and it and it's probably a terrible explanation but that's how i knew it was not it like human. it breaks off yeah it doesn't it's come to an end it's almost like it's almost like it follows this line and then it like broadens like this mm -hmm. as it ends it's like like that mm -hmm. and that's how that one ended yeah dude that was awesome. I wish we'd had a video camera. It's kind of the same area where we had that last time. Yeah, this we are in the same section of forest where we heard the responses last time. Wow. Here we go. Nice bright night. Right there is the drop off. Yeah. The road down there is big. I think it's one of the paints, Paint Creek, falling down there. So right up here is where that thing was thrown. And this stuff seems taller now. Yeah, it is. It's more grown. Taller. Um, but what I've seen started over in these trees over here and ran this way. And then it, like... Seemingly. Seemingly jumped off. But this is the cliff. Right? And that we had heard shortly before that, we had heard what sounded like something coming up that hill. Oh, yeah. Scaling up that hill. Yeah. And then I saw something peeking, then you saw that, and basically it seemed like it turned around and went back the way it came. Yeah. I 100% agree. That was really weird. How we were able to pick that up. <laughs> yeah, it was like the second we saw kind of a messy look at here, like, okay, we need to get up yeah. there. Very interesting. There's so many dead trees here. Can we, will that take us straight back to the van? Well, what's that? Like if we just walk straight? Or kind of feel like I'm not sure if we should veer off too much. No. I don't know, all we have to do is take a Weird, I'm still intrigued. Nick, 
few wood pieces, I guess. Yeah. Are you ready to head back, Seth? Kind of. Okay. My stomach hurts for some reason. Like you feel like we need to leave? I don't know. Kind of. Your your energy is different. You're quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, I just I don't know. What's I don't up? I don't like this. this uh, Makes you uncomfortable. A little bit. Documentary right here. What's that? Is this gonna be quality documentary right here, though? No, I'm not. I'm not saying this is documentary stuff right here. Oh, I am. What's that? If you're feeling uncomfortable, maybe there's a reason. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just... <clears throat> I just feel like... I feel like if... I don't know. What, bro? Like, if we kept going, we're just gonna, like, get lost. Let's get that vibe, like, we shouldn't be here, but I don't know. It's hard to explain. I like that. Is it because you... You're feeling like there's than other people that are here, like other humans that are here, and you feel like they might come back? No. I don't see how we get lost. Go that way, or the road, and just go to the path. Yeah? But, We have to take care of our people. Yes. So if we need to go, we need to go. I just, yeah, I don't know. I just get that vibe. Like, you just feel like we're walking. Like, you, do you feel that, like, inside? A little bit. Like you feel it inside like we shouldn't be here, so we need to leave? Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. We didn't question it a week ago at Jester. Yeah. I just, yeah, I'm not feeling There's it. something about this area that's weird. We can take note of that. I feel it in my stomach right now, too. Yeah, it's so do not, I. It's not dread or anything. No, it's just, I feel it, off. It's, it's just, weird. It's, there's something. There's some weird energy here. When did you start feeling it? Right when we walked up here? Yeah. No, I haven't heard anything either. Good with that. I just, I don't know. Ever since we got here, even to this new... There's an energy. I think the, the tree is wet. So uh, yeah, so am I. That's why I'm consistently standing around. Because there's a different feeling about these woods. Yeah. Like I said, I think... It could. Did you hear that? That's what we've been hearing. Yeah. You feel that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's not like my body's telling me, like, hey, just be aware. Something might come up on you. It's like there's an aura about this place. Paranormal I'm not paranormal feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. You ready to leave? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I just heard that moan again. It was very really close. Yeah, I heard it too. Yeah. Like, we need to go in. Yellow River State Forest once again proved to the team that there is indeed something unusual roaming the woods of the park. Even with the entire weekend, only a small part of the massive area was able to be explored. This deep, dense forest gives perhaps the best, most prevalent argument for Sasquatch to be alive and well in the Hawkeye State. But there was a lot of uh, branches being broken and rustling going on. I observed whatever it was. There were some more branches being broken and some rustling and then nothing. There was not a sound after that. Uh, my name is Alan Crandall and I am a supervisory federal police officer. So I got up early that morning and decided I wanted to go fishing. Um, it was probably 4 or 4.30 in the morning. Came out here to Jester Park, went to the east side of the pond, uh, 
was fishing in the little spots over there and came along the, the bank, along the bridge. Wasn't catching a whole lot. Uh, didn't see anybody out here. Wasn't a whole lot of animal life. Uh, it was just kind of a typical morning out here in Chester Park. I was sitting over here fishing at the pond and I hear this really loud rustle. Um, it sounded really heavy and then as I heard it, I looked behind me. This dead tree right here, approximately halfway, uh, a little bit more than halfway up, um, I saw a profile of uh, shoulders and head with no snout, no elongated snout, no ears, and it was walking. As I'm looking at the tree, it was walking from right to left toward um, that direction, and I heard a few more rustling and, and some branches breaking, and then nothing, it was just gone. The whole encounter was probably 15 seconds or less um, from the start of the wrestling to the end of the wrestling, and then there's nothing after that. There's no more sounds, no running, no nothing, no talking, nothing. I could tell uh, it was brown in color. I could tell that uh, it was hairy of some kind. I couldn't tell if it was long or short. It was too dark. Um, over here it was still dark, but the, the shadow and the color, I was able to, to pick that out compared to all the green and the lighter browns very distinct for you know for when you see a deer and there was none of that it, it looked like a, a kind of a human silhouette but it was it was definitely bigger than that we're gonna go down here and see hopefully I don't die Okay, so down by the tree, Alan, this is where you think it was about right here, maybe. Yeah, Ed? could be a little bit taller than that. Taller. It was definitely taller to where that that tiny branch comes out. So I'm trying to get. And you, would you say it was behind this tree? I'm fairly certain it was behind. So it it is in a, an incline, so it goes down even further. If I went behind this tree, and already. I'm six foot, so we're looking at another two feet, maybe, roughly. That's eight foot. If if that's where he was, if he's standing where I am, if it goes lower, we're looking at nine foot, something like that. That's insane. That's really tall. Alan, you ever seen a, a deer? Never seen a deer nine foot tall. Nine foot tall. Nope, not okay. anywhere Won't close. Get, I have spent. A lot of my time in the outdoors, all over the United States, Europe, and parts of the Middle East, and I've never seen anything like that. Uh, I have no idea what it is. It, uh, like I said, it was there and then it was gone. After Alan's incredible encounter, as well as the geographical connection with Sailorville Lake, the team knew Jester Park must be investigated. Spending two separate nights investigating the park, Jesse, Seth, and Alan would soon discover some of their most intriguing evidence of Sasquatch to date. So did I.
there's some walking over here. Did you hear that out? Yep. Yeah. There's like clear as day, someone something walking. Like bipedally? Yeah. The water's right there, isn't it? You good, bro? Yeah, I thought something jumped. I saw a tree knock. So did I. Woo! Is it raining? What's that sound? Do you hear it? Yeah. Woo! It's amazing. Woo! Yeah. It almost sounded human. Yeah. It's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. I have no idea. Unless it's like one of the weird animals that's over there. I've never heard that sound before. Yeah, it just sounds, it sounds like, like it reminds me of. Yeah. But the Samurai Speak is a lot faster. I don't remember who it did. It was that Al Foreman and Rob Rod something. But it's been tested that humans can't, there's something about humans can't make that sound. Get on that little dude for being resilient. <laughs> I 
got it. I just can't see what it is. Woo! Two eyes. Woo! Yeah, but that's the only thing moving, so I'll... I guess it's a bird. Like an owl? Yeah. The team's first investigation gave them much to think about and to review. The night brought many strange vocalizations, as well as a presence of something in the woods with them. However, unbeknownst to them, night two would deliver even more. This, my outfit's definitely going to win best of the documentary. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I'm just saying, oh you you may have the short game, but I definitely have the long game. Oh yeah. Get it? That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are kind of like eerily quiet out here, other than the water. Extremely quiet. That's another reason why I'm so excited about the snow. Because even when it snows, it gets really quiet. It also could be really good for us too. Because it's usually when wildlife is completely silent that Bigfoot's around. This is very interesting. It is. Very interesting. That tree, too. Snapped, over. snapped right. Oh wow, you're right. Oh, almost time for live stream. Perfect timing. Over here. That oh, you're oh, right. Okay. Dang. Okay, so live stream. All right, ready. let's do this. We actually come up on some twigs over here, stacked up against the tree, which we'll show you in a second. Um, and then we notice this this tree break right here. What's weird is we're in a very dense woods and for a straight wind to come here and just snap this sucker, I mean, it's possible, but this is definitely like classic squatch activity right here. <clears throat> I mean, you can see that that has been, take the light away, there we go. Like that has been pushed and broken. Some, some force has caused that to break. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously, this has been put here on purpose. I mean, this, this is all loose. Um, and again, we never say anything's conclusive because we weren't here. We don't know what did this. But this, again, is classic Squatch activity. They build these things supposedly for monuments, uh, for communication. Um, some believe that it's a marker for dead ones. Um, but this is all placed here. This one is very high up. As you can see, this one is snapped all the way up there. Um, and it's just, again, it's very interesting. And there's a lot of dead trees around here, but only like to have a very few far between ones snapped. Right. And that's... To say that it's on purpose. And that's about probably, what, six and a half feet up? Maybe seven. Oh, I'm six foot tall. Okay, so that's six. That's about seven foot tall then. Yeah. So, and and the crazy thing about it, if you think about the one we were just looking at, this is broken in a completely opposite direction. And so, if it was, we got an owl hooing in the distance. Yep. And and the waves of the monster quest. And it's getting really loud. Active. Just quiet down. Shh, don't talk. So we're here. This owl just going nuts out there. We've heard owls out here before, and it's usually like, ooh, and then a couple minutes, ooh. This one's going insane. Ooh. There's a couple of them back and forth. Yeah. And then there's this weird high-pitched sound that just went on for like a couple seconds yeah. and then it stopped. Yeah. When you get to kind of have a movement, movement, like... movement. Big movement over there. Oh. 
Yo, yo, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, but here, okay. You have sticks on top of sticks that are under sticks that are on top of sticks. What we're looking at here, and we, if you guys are just joining us, we kind of touched on this a little bit ago um, at the beginning of the stream. These stick structures are something that we often look for when we're doing a squatch hunt. Again, it's not a conclusive thing that says this is evidence that squatch exists, but it's it's so common in areas that have squatch activity. And what we're looking at right here is we're in the middle of the woods, okay? So keep that in mind. We're in the middle of the woods. And we have these trees. We have a fallen tree here, and it leads up to this little area. And if you look in this little area here, we have these these branches that are stacked on top of each other with other tree limbs on top of them with tree limbs below them and they are all individual little limbs this is individual this is individual that's individual and they're all stacked seemingly strategically specific areas that are like this and you don't understand why but it's very common to find these things in the areas that have squatch activity and we, this is the second one that we found in this one specific area. But they're nowhere near the same. Like they're totally no, different completely structures. completely different. Yeah, I keep hearing noises behind us, but I don't see anything. You know, it's not like I don't see deer. But it sounds like something falling or. I heard one. Logs. Oh wow, look at that one. It's bent over. <laughs> That's cool. These are all bent up. Look at these. These are all snapped. This one's busted. That one's but look at this. Huh. That is different. Right? Like, you got that one that's straight bent over. And then you got this. And then there's some laid over over here, too. This one's busted. A little difficult. It's imprinted. See this? You got an imprint right here. Wasn't me? I don't think De so. Definitely it's, not me. It's big. I'm trying nope. to figure out a way to get that on camera here, but it's kind of hard. It nope. goes right here. My gosh, okay. Hold on for a break. Yeah, go ahead. Take, take the lights off, because having enough light on it makes it better. So I wear size 12, 13. This is easily a 15. Yep. So, the, the what, whatever this imprint is, we don't know. Right here, roughly. But it's definitely pressed down. Yeah, there's you definitely some sort of an imprint there. Yeah, not really. But just documenting this, that is definitely a large foot, twice as wide as my foot. And I would say another couple, probably three inches longer than my foot. That's a, that's a, that's a big foot. foot. Yeah, like this. It widens out. Like it's narrow. Yeah, it's there at the base. And it widens, widens out. Dude, that is a huge, huge. Dude, I don't know. I mean, this right yeah, here. kind of looks like it, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it was here. Stepped off. Wow. To draw out Bigfoot. And so we're going to play some Native American music on the loudspeaker to see response in return. <laughs>
Were you hearing? Did you hear that? No. You didn't? No. But I have, dude, I have my it ear flaps over my ears and a hood on. It was hardcore, like, for like literally 20 seconds. So we're, we're, we're getting substantial movement. Big time movement. Oof, I'm getting the heaps from from my right side, big time. Ooh, yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling the heaps real big right now. Real uncomfortable right now. Oh yeah, real uncomfortable. Oh, frick, I feel like it's right behind us, dude. <sighs> Shine up in the trees. Yeah. Yeah, I've been checking the trees. Yeah. The atmosphere has completely changed since we turned that music on. Absolutely. I'm getting consistent and constant goosebumps. Dude, I think, is there like, when I first heard it, it was just like slowly stepping, but he's hearing it over there. There's probably like at least. Okay, then I do know what you're talking about, but I heard it over there. Really? Yeah, I heard, this is what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we've heard it from three separate directions. Ooh. It could be. All right, watchers. So just to reiterate, after turning on the Native American music, all three of us have heard heavy footsteps and walking from three separate directions, which in a way is surrounding us. That yeah, was. Owl. Yeah. Let's go towards the owl. Oh yeah, this is our path right here. Okay. Okay.
Why would an owl respond to tree knocks? So weird. Dude, they're getting farther away. They're literally getting farther away. Yeah. What the fudge? They're literally getting quieter. Okay. Owls fly and hoot at the same time. I don't know. We need to research. Yeah. We need to research calls too. Do it. It's almost like it fires them up every time. Yeah. Is there an antenna straight through? Mm -hmm. Straight ahead. I don't think so. Dude. I'm not kidding. Two eyes just lit up. Two red eyes. Straight ahead. What Seth saw were two large red eyes. You can see something appear to the left of Alan. They don't appear red on camera because of the infrared night vision being used. They also appear as one because of the resolution of the camera, and not being the subject in focus. Also, this is not a reflection. The camera moves past this area multiple times with no lights, except for once earlier when the lights or eyes seem to appear once again. Here, look at my hand. Look at my hand. Two eyes or something. Yeah, I must see any around there. Straight up, they were bright. Keep that camera on, bro. I've got it. What the frick? Keep, keep lights off for right now. They were like crooked. It was like this. It was like it's looking like that. Oh, like around a tree or something. Yeah. Oh, I just saw something. I saw a red flash. Go to the right. Super quickly. Dude, what the fudge? You and I didn't even move. It just like appeared there. You know, it's almost weird. Like you think back to last year in Lansing, Yellow River, the fluid motion of these things. The red that I just saw was like it was just racing across. What the crap? I saw something again. Really? A red light lit up and dissolved straight ahead of us. The camera. I'm just going to stay what I seen again. We're sort of standing there. I'm looking straight forward. I didn't even move my head or anything. All of a sudden I see two red eyes or something. But they were cockeyed, like they were peeking around. And then Jesse seen these red lights sipping through the trees. What I seen, it's like messing with my head right now. What the frick did I see? You saw what many of us have seen. Dude, they were so bright. Yeah. And there was no light source for them. Yeah. Yeah, it was right behind us. 
Yes. And then I saw red. And it was just really quick. Two little red dots. And then it was the weirdest thing. I saw two other little red dots. Just like zoom across. And then through these little batch of trees, I just saw like little sprinkles of little red lights. I don't know. It was like of them or something. Uh, but it was so weird. It's like all of a sudden all these little red lights are to appear. But there, and there's nothing over there. And there's nothing. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. And, and, how, how far do you think we were from those deer? That deer? Oh man, we got probably within 50 feet. Okay. Easily. But when we first stopped, yeah. it was probably further than 50 feet. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Over 100 feet, I'd say. Probably. Okay, in between the space, in between the eyes of that deer, yeah. that was a big deer. Yeah. This, the space in between these eyes was double that. Holy crap. Dude, this thing was whatever, like, if I'm imagining a head, massive. Yeah. Because it was that far away. Yeah. It was probably twice the distance. And the, the eyes were still not as close to me. Like, look at his, those dead. That's what I saw. Exactly I've got, I got freaking goosebumps all over it. Yeah, I got chills too. I want to walk this way towards it. The owls are consistent noise. They're gone. Like we said, we hear owls, we get activity. Yes. It's not a coincidence. And you know where they started? Right, right here. here. Right in this area with the... And then they moved that yep. way. Yep. And now they're gone. Totally, there's no red. And these these tags are not reflective. Exactly. And on top of all of that, none of us had a light. No, exactly. Yeah, none of our lights were shining. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, dude. Oh my goodness. Sorry, buddy. What you be? I can. Yeah. Wow, just nested. Dude, that's insane. Just keep the light on it. Another one back there. Wow. I don't want to turn it Okay, let's keep walking. Can you hear that quick? Like, yeah. That's not good. what we've heard at all tonight. Absolutely not. Uh huh. Wow, good catch, dude. Shoot. With a possible sighting of self illuminating eyes, the team attempted to recreate and debunk this sighting. Could the eyes have been caused by vehicle taillights? Even though no cars had been seen or heard that night. All right, so we're gonna walk out to the area that I saw the red eyes back in November. Um, just kind of check it out in the daytime, see if we can get the the area kind of figured out. Again, it was dark that night, um, obviously, and so I can't maybe exactly remember the exact spot, but we'll run up and down tonight when it gets darker and test a bunch of different spots to make sure. Um, but we're just gonna walk out there, kind of figure out where it's at. Yeah. We started making our way back because the owls yep. started to come over here. Right. And I'd say it was right, right in here that you saw it. See, that's kind of what I'm thinking. See, yep. And then the camera, the shot of it being caught is off to the left. 
Okay. So that would make sense. That does make I, sense. I was probably shooting like this, and then it caught it right in this area. So, this, this, <laughs> we're obviously still going to do the test. But, but there's no road. There's no road. The, the only road through those trees is sideways. You would only see the side of a tail light. And why is someone's tail light only on for like a second? And, no and it's, it, it's stationary. Right. So they would have to be driving. Those suckers didn't move. They were literally stationary. They didn't change size. They didn't change any direction, nothing. They literally just sat there and then they just gone. Yep. So that proves it right there, but we'll still do it. Yeah, and we'll we're still gonna, do tests. We're gonna run the gambit, you know, do a Mythbuster style and freaking try every possible scenario just to see but I can tell you right now if we don't see those tail lights or those tail lights don't create anything here then I know what I saw yep. all right guys it's dark we're gonna do the test Jesse's in the van he's about to go drive through and do all the different tests to see if we've got our, our eyes as I I've seen supposedly um, but all right all right brother hit it do this is there's a little parking area up here um, that you can actually see the location where Seth saw what we believe to be Sasquatch eyes Bigfoot eyes I'm gonna back in to each individual parking space up here just so that we can get the brake lights in a certain way to see if by chance the red lights or the excuse me the red eyes that Seth saw could potentially be brake lights so it definitely wouldn't have been a car on that road uh -uh. where they're at because we would have seen it go by there's another do you see all the way behind like where yep. he's at now there's another yep. car that's over there though you're right but that's so small too right and with the amount of cover that we would have had back then yep exactly and it was right here then again, we would have seen it come through here, though. Right. So we're shooting straight right where I seen these lights. And you can see the headlights coming through. But those are headlights, so it's actually yellow right now. I can't even see. There's a rear view light, but it's only one. Nothing even close to what I saw. And again, he's already too far from where I was. So we're going back in this first spot here. All right, make sure to uh, shut off the headlights as well. I'm in the first spot, headlights off, parking lights are still on though. I'm just gonna scan with the, uh, uh, the camera right now. He's gotta put it apart. See, it's too big too. Yeah. All right, just put it in park and sh like let off the brake. All right, now fire up the brake. No, because here's the thing, like I didn't see it that night and I would have seen that. Yeah, see how much it makes it glow? Uh -huh. And then add to the, add to the, uh... okay, so um, first assumptions, this is probably the closest we could get to the leaning eyes, but I think they're still too crooked and they're huge. So just for clarification, you're saying that the the red that you saw was at too much of a crooked angle to be at the same angle that the headlights are currently at right now? Yeah, I don't they, I don't remember them being 
it wasn't that crooked. I am looking straight at where I saw the eyes, and you are almost, I would say, so if where I saw the eyes was 12 on a clock, you would be at like 10. So a significant difference as far as distance is concerned. Absolutely. And so if, you, if you're saying that someone was sitting there with the brake lights, it would have to have that top brake light. They would have to be sitting in the middle of the road with their lights off. And we had been here for a while. No, we never seen an approach. We never seen a, anything. And then literally just someone's brakes light up in the middle of the road and then gone. And it has always looked like a car. Yeah, it always has. You know, there's there is no changing of shape. There was no okay. That might not be like that. Has always looked like a car. Right. Exactly. All right. Stop there. Stop. Okay. Now, could you see anybody actually being in, parking there, crossing like so the brake lights are facing us? Um, no, you'd have to block the entire road and drive off of the road. And the lights are so bright. Oh yeah, they're so they bright. And they that, illuminate everything. I mean, yeah, and there was snow on the ground, which means they would have been even brighter back yeah. then. Yeah. So, and and I didn't see it. So, right. it, it was something that was very subtle. And there was nothing. We didn't hear a car sound or anything. No, nothing. It was so quiet out here that night. Jester Park surpassed all expectations the team had. Paired with Allen's original sighting, the evidence of Sasquatch being in the state of Iowa hit an all-time high. With visual evidence of possible self-illuminating eyes unable to be debunked, Jester Park stands as one of the most active places the team has investigated to date. But CCPI had one final stop at the place where it all began, Waterloo. So my first experience with Bigfoot actually happened. We were in Waterloo and we were seemingly lost in this chunk of woods. There was no reason. We had just walked through these woods like an hour before, no problem. And now we can't find our way out. Soon we're hearing large footsteps and a large body going into water. And it's all behind us. We're getting creeped out. We came upon this flooded path. I heard this really loud noise kind of rustling through the woods across the flooded path. And I saw this really big black figure approach a tree that was actually falling across the trail. It was laying like a teeter-totter. And this black figure lays its hand on the tree and pushes it down with little to no effort. And it kind of dawns upon me that this is a Bigfoot. This is literally a Sasquatch standing across the way from us. So I scream out to everybody that was with me, holy crap, there's a Bigfoot. And my brother's shouting, there's a Bigfoot, there's a Bigfoot. And we tear off running after this thing. And it lets its hand off of the tree and the weight that it had on this tree let off and it went flying through the air. We ran after this thing and as it ran through the woods, it sounded like a Mack truck was just mowing down trees and shrubs as it was trying to get away from us. And with the countless footsteps that we were taking running after this thing full speed, it covered so much ground in mere seconds and it was gone. A couple days later, we go out just wandering through the middle of the woods off trail, completely off trail, and we stumble upon tracks. Like I have a huge foot and these tracks were bigger and wider than my foot. And it was crazy to find those tracks. It was then that I was like, okay, this is, this is legit. Like there's very, something very much to this. The Katoski Green Belt in Waterloo, Iowa. This small, wooded area located in the Cedar Valley seems harmless to most passers-by, but these woods hold secrets. From sightings in the 1970s to multiple encounters for CCPI over a 10-year period, this was a homecoming like no other. What happened that night in 2009 and years after? The team was determined to find out. We've been hearing, uh... Bigfoot, what we like to call this, because we've had strange run-ins out here, and this is where we think one area that Bigfoot lives, or Squatch, or Sasquatch, whatever you want to call them. Right when we were walking up, we were working on putting the camera together, 
and we heard something get thrown out of that tree and we were hearing like footsteps and twigs snapping all around us. The common to do with the Bigfoot is when, when you're in a, in a location and things start happening, you'll hear footsteps and yeah. movements of all, all around, around you. you. And that's what we've been hearing. We've heard footsteps over here, cracking over here. We've seen twinkling eyes up in the trees over here. Which again, that doesn't signify Bigfoot. Yeah. Still, it's something. Um, twigs snapping, all sorts of stuff all around us. Well, when you put it together with the stuff that we've experienced out here, Last time we were out in this area, we were having rocks thrown into the water next to us. Huge suckers. And that's one thing that Bigfoot's infamous for. That's right, under the bridge. We couldn't even see where the rocks were coming from either. Huh. No, no idea. We were shining lights, there was nobody. You see the ripples. Nothing, but... yeah. But uh, Rocks don't pick themselves up and throw themselves into the water. That's true. That's true. And we found these three mounds, not sure what they are. Could be Indian burial mounds. Just thought it was interesting. We found uh, mounds before in another location that seemingly might have had a, a squatch nest. So it's just interesting to check out. And they've been here for a while because these trees are nested in this. Right. These mounds with the root system at the top. So it's not like the, the dirt has been moved here. It's just different too, because there's no, you really, I mean, maybe there is, but as far as we can see, there's no other ones. Right, yeah. Yep. So this is the trail that we started down. And Gert and I found the tracks like out that way. Yeah, it did. Okay, yeah. But you never know. You never know. I don't remember, so it's got to be. Is it? It could be like right in this area here, dude. It really, yeah. It looks, it looks plausible. Yeah, it could easily have been overgrown. Yeah. But just the trajectory of where these trucks are now, it seems like this would be... Similarly, yeah, this seems pretty close. Yeah. Because, so like, even looking ahead, you got a, a nice... Yeah. So, like, let's yeah. see here. Yeah, dude, this feels this feels right. Out here where it's all lit up for the, the gas station and whatnot is where the abandoned Greyhound Park used to sit. And they had, like, old brick buildings here where they'd house the greyhounds that came to race 
and so we in this general area here we came back into the woods and I can still see it in my mind we came to this trail and we're trying to figure out which way to go we look left we look right and we're like okay well we know the, the car is back this way and so we just started heading down this way just to go back to the car and I mean it was really that simple of a decision there wasn't anything complex about it we didn't think we were going to get lost this is shut off what yeah I'll yeah, keep this. that one rolling Gary it was just ooh, shut ooh, up. Ooh. Did you hear movement? Ooh. Holy frick, yes. Big movement. Like someone was walking up behind us. Are dude. you serious? I heard footsteps coming behind us and to the point where like it sounded like they're walking on twigs to the point where I was like, there have to be people walking down this trail right now. Like I have goosebumps all the way down my legs. And it was just as my camera just died. Just as, and I said, Gert, yeah. keep yours on. And, and it yeah. happened. And now oh, the camera's gosh. turned back on and it's running fine. Dude, that got me. Holy frick. I was fully convinced that there were two people behind us. Like, there's that much noise. It was like two to three different kind of footsteps. That reminds me of the footsteps that we heard following us. What? Yeah, that was following us when we were heading back down this trail when we got lost. Like, we just heard all these footsteps in these, these cracks of twigs and, and shrubbery moving and just this movement, man, these thuds. And then you hear that after just camera turns off. is racing right now. Oh man. Again, right before all that commotion just broke out, which is very odd because this is about the area that we came out 10 years ago. Yep. Um, and we were talking about it. Your camera dies. So let's let's put the puzzle pieces together. So we had been walking now for probably 20 minutes, right? At yeah. least. Oh yeah. 
camera never turned off. I manually turned that one off on my on my own accord. We finally get to the spot and I'm explaining the details. And literally Seth's camera just stops recording. It stays powered on, but just stops recording. I turn to you and I say, leave your camera on. And right mm. when I say that is when I hear all the noises behind me. And then I turn around and there's literally nothing there. And well, it's weird too, because when I said, dude, my camera just shut off. I instantly got that vibe, like something's off. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you freaking freaked out because you're hearing these footsteps. And, and then my camera just turned right back. I was able to turn it right back on. Yeah. So just as an explanation, because a lot of people could watch this that maybe aren't like into Bigfoot necessarily or haven't researched the topic a lot. One of the things about Bigfoot is that there are a lot of possibilities that are included in Bigfoot lore. And one of them is that it's more supernatural than credit is given. And a lot of people believe that it can transfer from one dimension to the next. Um, there's biblical connections that they are um, descendants of the Nephilim, which is when the angels, the fallen angels came and mated with uh, human daughters. And so what, from a immediate perspective, this seems paranormal in the sense of like ghost activity, like, oh my gosh, these woods are haunted. But you have to take in into consideration. You know, consideration all of these different possibilities that come with Bigfoot lore. And so it's not just physical all the time. It can be a supernatural presence that is there and gone because, and, and that is, is an easy way to explain why you never find a Bigfoot because it's more supernatural being than, than the credit is given. So keeping that in mind whenever things are happening is, is very important. We're gonna have to go I thought I just saw some movement. Back in the olden days with the old blue camera. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Remember your body. It's an incredible tool. And if you get to a place where there's something that maybe isn't natural or not what your body's used to, it's gonna be. And I came over here and I got chill. And I got the goosebumps and I got the hairs raising up. Kind of like that electricity in the air. Dude, my heart's starting to pound again. Like it was back over there. Yeah, big time chills. Got goosebumps all the way down my legs. Major, major chills. Major, major chills. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I saw a red, red something down here, and I've yet to watch taillights appear through the trees. Oh yeah, dude, my freaking anxiety. Freaking weird. All right, boys. Oh, I kind of feel like we should go dark, so I'm gonna shut this off. That's good. That trail that we came out of was came to a T, and then so we came straight and went right, right out to the bike trail or the. Um, Greyhound. You might be just remembering something that's a little farther ahead. Uh, I don't think so. We had to forge our own trail because of the flooding. No, we walked a trail for that. Alright, I, I don't we remember. Have just, I don't remember just being an L like this. We wouldn't have been just like, hey, screw it, let's just walk. Hey, okay, here's a trail here. Okay. Because, I mean, granted, it might turn left and right, but it's not straight. Do you want to go down this trail? We don't have to go far. I'm curious. I remember it being open, but also like tunneled by trees. I see we go. We Head go, back? Go that way. Okay. See if we can I just need to get back to that spot. Yeah. And feel yeah. that spot. Yeah. Gosh, we should be coming up on it. Yeah. This may not be exactly it. 
I feel like so you have the trail that's going I feel like that spot made a T so it would have been like right here so we come out walk down the trail take a left go 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 and then we hit that and we're like where the frick was this at we don't remember this and we're like how did we get across this yeah because we thought the trail flooded while we were yeah gone gone it was so weird. i don't know i have no idea the map that you're drawing in your head so i cannot say one way or the other because i have literally right. no clue what you're talking about i don't know i sometimes think that we literally like walked into something else like i remember gert and i came out that next day huh? and we were just talking about this we remember this and we just walked right through it and we walked right to the greyhound trail no problem okay and we couldn't find i don't remember being able to find the trails that we went on Okay. Like, did we walk into another freaking dimension or something like that? Did and we that's walk? how we got so messed it's up. Like, it doesn't make sense how we got so turned around. Yeah. And, like, we literally came back where we thought we had come through. And all of a sudden we're like, dude, did this fill up with water while we were gone? Yeah. Like, did something open up? Like, I don't understand how you guys could have gotten lost. Right? It's a lot of areas, just as we were coming down, I could see the street light from the yeah. parking lot. Like, no problem. Like... I know we were something was going on that confused us for sure. Yeah. But like that trail's not there. That we took. I know we did not walk around a thing like this. But what I don't understand is we literally thought we were walking the same exact way. And then we literally all of us, all of us that were there, five of us, were like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like we walked through a portal of sorts got yeah. super confused and then when we came out of that portal was right back where we started yeah we're super confused and we just started like bickering at each other and it's almost it's kind of like because Cole kicked the map in the river <laughs> exactly <laughs> we don't need this map okay we just heard a really weird sound it was almost like an animal got attacked that way yep yeah. yep it's like an animal got attacked yeah got a good meal. Yeah. What? Though. No. Okay. good. Like, I've heard rabbits get attacked by hawks and stuff, and they'll wheel and scream like that. It was it not was that. I'm gonna leave the no. camera on. To start it, it sounded like a thump. And then you... Yeah. Go. Yeah. And there was... There was some sort of a... A thump followed by the noise. So it's weird that I ha we haven't heard anything further yeah, than yeah. yeah. So then what was the second sound? He sounded like a follow-up to me. And more of like a gasping death. Kind of a yeah. thing or whatever. Say, so, yeah, yeah. how the F did it get tied to it? What the fuck? What the frick was that? Tied to it. It's like a freaking monkey. <laughs> yeah. Like a hobbit monkey. I heard that. Did you hear that? Yes. That was a freaking Bigfoot scream. It went, uh, uh. That was a freaking yep. classic. Yeah, mark that. Here. That's all right. We literally all just heard that. Individually, did not speak about it until it was done. Gert stopped, I stopped, Seth stopped. Did you hear it, Cole? Yeah, I heard it. Cole heard it too. And we all heard the exact same thing. <laughs> that was amazing. So we need to bump up that audio because it was pretty far away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
That was far away. Yeah. It was pretty Because that was a loud howl, and it was far away. Yeah, it was very far. That was insane. And it was two parts. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. We've never. Ooh, it just got darker. Oh, clouds. <laughs> We've never heard vocalization out here before. No. In this area. Uh huh. and it seems like uh, when Bigfoot comes in and commands. You hear that? Yep. There was another one. It was different. Short. It was shorter. It was more of a, a howl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more owl. Yeah. Yeah. How was an owl? Owl. Owl's owl. Owl. Okay. Okay. How, was it? How did it go? <laughs> <laughs> those frogs stopped and then that started. Yeah, that was weird. It's just these coincidences. I heard, I heard a long one, another one, but it was, it was more of a howl. I hear that. That low hum? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was that. No. I, I thought it was too, and then I realized he hadn't played it yet. It was a yeah. Like straight up, dude. I literally thought it was it was you playing. I can't even, I don't even know the location though. It almost sounded like it was like right there. It sounded very close, yeah. It's past. Some big flying right there. That's yep, big owl. There's a squatch in these woods. <laughs> these infamous woods didn't show their whole hand, yet proved once again that they are full of mystery and paranormal happenings. What happened in 2009 may never be answered, but one thing's for sure. CCPI is on a mission to find the ones that remain hidden. The ones that lurk in darkness. The ones known as Squatch. Squatch, they are here in Iowa. Forests, cornfields, they've been seen in people's backyards. And it's not just now, it's, it goes back decades. Nobody wants to admit it because it's too out there for them. And there's a lot of people out there that won't talk about it because they're afraid they're gonna be made fun of, they're harassed, whatever. That's the point of this film, that's the point of this documentary, is to bring to light, somewhat of a light, to Squatch being in Iowa. They're here, they live everywhere and they are among us so when you're out at night driving through the woods driving by cornfields keep your eyes peeled you never know what you're going to run into